welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Hey, you know what? There's another member of the Poor Mouth Posse. It is Judging James. Judging James. Here we go. Judging James. Look at his wanted poster. Be careful if you ever see Judging James. And we'll throw his wanted poster up here. Judging James, this man loves to say bad things about other people. He sits around, hey, did you hear about so-and-so? Hey, did you know this about so-and-so? Oh, I heard you talking about that. Like, let me tell you this about them. He loves to just absolutely run people down. You know, boys and girls, you and I, we think we're pretty cool, but we're not as awesome as we think. You know, God says that we're all sinners who need a savior. The Bible says this in the book of James, James chapter four, verse number 11 and 12. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is but one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that thou judgest another? Hey, boys and girls, let's not judge other people. We'll leave that for the Lord. We just need to do right, mind our own business, leave other folks alone. Don't run other people down with the words that we say. We have another member of the poor mouth posse, and that is Swearing Sam. Swearing Sam, boys and girls. I don't know if you know Swearing Sam. He is the man that says words that you should not say. You know those filthy, foul cuss words. Boys and girls, we should never say certain words. There are words that we can fill list after list with that are awful words, terrible words. They should never come out of the mouth of a Christian. There's even some people that try to act cool and they will say everything leading up to that cuss word so that people are like, whoa, 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 and they'll substitute in just part of the cuss word at the end. Be like, I ah, see, I didn't really say it. I just said something like it. Hey, you know what we should do? We should stay away from any type of word that would bring dishonor to the Lord. You know what God says about that? In Ephesians chapter four, verse 29, the Lord says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Hey, boys and girls, let's not let any bad talk come out of our mouth. Don't say any swear words. There's talk you shouldn't say. Only good things should come out of our mouth to God. Swearing Sam, part of that poor mouth posse, you don't want to be around. But then another member is Guilty Gary. Guilty Gary? What in the world, Mr. Nathan? What is Guilty Gary guilty of? Well, whoop, I dropped Guilty. Guilty Gary's got a problem. Guilty Gary takes the Lord's name in vain. You know that. You know those 7th and 8th grade girls? They all get together in a little corner like, oh my! And they say the Lord's name. Or some people will try to not say God's name, but they might say part of God's name and then just put osh on the end of it. Hey, boys and girls, God cares about his name. He holds his name high, and so should we. We should never, ever use God's name in vain. When we do use his name, it ought to be out of love and respect because we're talking good about him to someone. We're praying to him or we're reading about him in the scriptures. You know, the Bible has this to say, whoops, guilty Gary. In Exodus chapter 20, verse number seven, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Boys and girls, be careful about how you use God's name. All right, another member of the poor mouth posse is shameful Shiloh. Shameful Shiloh. Look at that wanted post right there. Shameful Shiloh. Mr. Nathan, what are you talking about? 
What's so bad about shameful Shiloh? What did he do? This is the man who laughs at evil deeds that people do. He enjoys talking about evil things. He loves to talk about the sin that is done around him. Hey, boys and girls, when it comes to sin, we're not supposed to even know about it, let alone talk about it. We're not supposed to get involved in talking about evil things that are done. Wickedness should not be on our lips. You know, the Bible has this to say in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 12, when it's talking about wicked deeds, the Bible says, for it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Be careful what you're talking about. Don't get joy about talking about wicked things. Don't be like shameful Shiloh in part of the poor mouth posse. All right, two more. Here we go. Another one, Waterfall Walter. Do you guys know Waterfall Walter? Look at old Waterfall Walter. He is wanted part of the poor mouth posse. Mr. Nathan, why is he wanted? What did he do that is so bad that he's on the poor mouth posse? If a thought pops into Waterfall Walter's head, it pops right out of his mouth. He says everything that comes into his head. He doesn't even take time to think about it. He just says everything as it pops into his mind. He's always talking. He never shuts up. He's always saying something. Do you have a brother or sister like that that is always just talking and often says things that you're like, why do you say that? What's wrong with you? Keep your mouth closed. You shouldn't say those things. Waterfall Walter, he's the same thing. You know what? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Boys and girls, think about what you say before you say it. All right, next and last on our list is Fork Tongue Frank. Good old Fork Tongue Frank. There's his one opposer. But unlike the other critters, he doesn't really look that bad. Mr. Nathan, what's wrong with old Fork Tongue Frank? He looks like a pretty nice guy. Got a smile on his face. He doesn't look like one of those poor mouth posse people. He doesn't look like he's a criminal or anything. What's the matter with him? Well, Fork Tongue Frank, he says that he loves God with his mouth, but he doesn't mean it with his heart. He obeys the Lord with his mouth only, but not with his heart or his hands. He says that he loves Jesus only so that people will notice him. He wears the t-shirt, oh, I'm a Christian, but he's not. You know, the Bible has this to say in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 29, verse number 13. Wherefore the Lord said, talking about the nation of Israel, for as much as this people, Israel, draw near me with their mouth, that means they talk about serving the Lord and doing good for him, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Hey, boys and girls, I hope you don't ever get into the poor mouth posse. This fellow, Fork Tongue Frank, I think he's probably the worst one. What he has coming out of his mouth doesn't match what's in his heart. You know, there are some boys and girls that are out there that think if they just say all the good things, if they talk right and say all the right answers, that they'll be able to go to heaven one day. But boys and girls, you can talk as pretty as you want. You can stay away from bad words all you want to. But just because you talk well doesn't mean you'll be able to go to heaven. If you're trusting in just talking well to get you to heaven and saying the right things, you will miss it. Boys and girls, God needs to change you from the inside out. It's kind of like this. Let me see if I can't move this picture over a little bit. Talking about Fork Tongue Frank. You see, when God made us, he made us with a clean heart. God made us with a heart that was absolutely pure and perfect when he made Adam and Eve. They had a sinless heart. They'd never done anything wrong. And here they are, Adam and Eve, creation. God made them. They're in the Garden of Eden. There's no other people around. God created them with a perfect heart. Mankind started 
with a clean heart. But they were allowed to choose if they were going to obey God or disobey God. They chose to disobey God. And because they both chose to disobey God, their hearts were stained with sin. And every human being that's ever been born since then is born with a heart like this. Adam and Eve, when God created them, oh man, their heart was clean and perfect until they disobeyed God. But because they disobeyed God, sin stained their heart. And the Bible says, for by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Hey, boys and girls, every person that's ever been born has been born with a heart like this. But there's a problem. We need that thing fixed. We have to have a clean heart before God to be able to enter heaven. But we're born with a heart like this. So something has to be done because of the penalty and the payment that we owe for our sin. You know, some people say, well, if sin is a bad thing, I need to do something that's good. So I will just try to not be bad. So I will be good and I will just do everything that I can to be good to get rid of that sin-stained heart. But boys and girls, you can be good all you want to. It won't get rid of the sin. Some people say, well, if sin is against God, you know, church, that's the place where you go to meet with God. I'll just go to church a lot. And I'll go to church every time the doors are open. And if I go enough times, it won't. You can go to church every day of your life. Boys and girls, just because you go does not mean that you can have your sin problem dealt with. Well, some people have said, well, listen, if it's a matter of the heart, maybe I can get a surgeon to go in there and operate and take away that sin. Hey, boys and girls. No doctor in the world can see that sin to get rid of it. Well, if sin's dirty, Mr. Nathan, maybe I could just wash it clean. You know, the Bible even says, though they, though thy take thee on much miter and soap, yet your iniquity is ever before me. Even if you wash all you want, you cannot wash your own sins away. Some people have even tried this. Adults do this a lot. They think, well, when that offering plate is passed at the church, I'll just put some money in there. And the more money I give, God will see, you know what? I mean business. I'm a good person. And he'll, he'll make that sin thing go away because I give money. Boys and girls, you can give all the money you want to, and your sin will not be dealt with. You know, when we hear about the gospel, the gospel of how the Lord Jesus came, he died for your sins. He died for my sins. He, who was sinless, the Lord Jesus, lived a perfect, sinless life when he was here on earth, went to the cross, died in my place and your place, was buried, rose again from the dead three days later, and even proved it by showing himself and speaking to all these different people before he ascended to heaven, where he is today making a place for us. For us to be able to go there, we have to have our sin problem dealt with. And boys and girls, we can't fix it ourselves. We need a Savior that will do it for us. And Jesus did that way down the cross. He made a way for us to be saved. The only way for us to be saved and have our heart clean from sin. We hear about that in the story of the gospel, which was what I just told to you. How that Jesus, because of his blood that he shed on the cross, he died for you and me. And if we receive him as our Savior and holy hope for heaven, if you and I do business with God, if we call upon the Lord to be saved, if you believe that Jesus died for you, was buried and rose again, if you believe in him and trust him as your Savior and call upon him, repent of your sins by turning and saying, you know what? Everything I believed about what I had to do, being good to get rid of my sin, give him money to get rid of my sin, going to church enough to get rid of my sin. I don't believe that anymore. I'm going to believe what the Bible says about being saved. When you turn to God and receive Jesus as your Savior, He will wash you clean. Boys and girls, then when you do, you start to say good things. You see, once God saves us, He gives us the want to to do right for Him. 
we then start saying good things. Not because we hope to get to heaven because of it, but out of love because we want to bring glory to God. When you're saved and you know Christ is your Savior, you want to say good things and bring glory to Him. Hey, I hope you're never, ever talked about as part of the poor mouth posse. I hope you're not one of those people that hopes just by saying the right things you'll be able to get to heaven. Boys and girls, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, man, today's the day you need to be saved. If you do, make sure that your speech, the words that you use, bring God glory and don't dishonor him. Well, thank you for watching today. I enjoyed our time together. Let's pray for Brother Adam that he'll be back up and, and running like normal. Y'all be good to him. Keep on watching. Do it heartily. And we'll talk to you guys later.